Okay. Welcome everyone in the Farmington and Salesforce Developer Group and Apex Hour. So uh, today we are going to talk about the MuleSoft and we have a special guest like uh, Shridhar and Mike. So who is going to talk about the uh, uh, MuleSoft, like what it means for the Salesforce Developer and what is the meaning of the is this like all acquisition and all. So and uh, we have another uh, special guest like uh, I just also want to say thanks to Samuel and Jitendra Jha for the joining us and uh, all the self, uh, all the Sri Lanka developer group as well. So they are also joining us. So now let me uh, let me introduce myself who I am. So she can you move to the next slide please. So my name is Amit Chaudhary and I'm the co-organizer of Farmington Hill Salesforce Developer Group and I'm organizing the Salesforce Apex Hour and I'm also a Salesforce MVP and you can follow me on my Twitter handle Amit underscore SFDC and you can also follow our uh, Apex, uh, Apex Hour Twitter handlers for uh, upcoming event and uh, sessions. So let, let's move to the next slide please. So let me hand over to the mic so the mic can give his introduction. Thanks, Amit. Uh, thanks everyone for having us today. Good morning. My name is Mike Sandboy and I'm the Director of Marketing at Auto Rabbit. Uh, just to give you a brief introduction to myself, I've been in the tech industry for a little over 25 years and uh, mostly in sales and marketing roles. But about eight years ago at a, at a very small company I was running, I had the opportunity to take over uh, the development and, and technical operations group. And uh, the opportunity was uh, my VP of engineering and tech ops left, and I had to do it. <laughs> so for about three years, I, I had a very deep dive, um, uh, as, the, as the expression goes, drinking from the fire hose experience about development and deployment practices. And that became an interest of mine. So for the last five years, I've been uh, marketing exclusively in the ALM and DevOps space. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter also at msamboy. And uh, just to give you a little bit about what we're gonna do today, kind of the structure, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction about Auto, Auto Rabbit, one minute. Uh, then I'm gonna introduce our main speaker, Shri, and Shri's gonna go ahead and give you an overview of the MuleSoft ecosystem share some thoughts on what it may mean to you as Salesforce developers, and then take you through a brief overview of our AutoRabbit's DevOps framework for MuleSoft. Then I'll come back and help field some questions uh, if, there, if there are any questions. The so next slide, please. A Little bit about AutoRabbit. Uh, AutoRabbit, we are a, a continuous uh, we are a, a continuous delivery platform for uh, for SaaS-based products, specifically both Salesforce and MuleSoft. The genesis of the company started back in 2009 with another company, and it morphed uh, in 2014 into the company we know as AutoRabbit. We're headquartered in San Ramon, California, and we have locations uh, many other places around the world, uh, Atlanta, Hyderabad, India, Melbourne, Australia, New York. And if you look to the right, those kind of those three tiles, those are our core tenants for our DevOps approach. Uh, three three things we do. Three things we simplify uh, your your process with our out of the box DevOps solution. We accelerate your uh, your time to market and by increasing your uh, release velocity, and we deliver value fast. So. Through our whole process, the key, the, our, our, our goal is to maximize your productivity uh, with uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Next slide, please. So I, I, everybody's here because we, we've all heard a lot about the, the, the big acquisition. $6.5 billion uh, Salesforce has paid for Microsoft. Uh, the number one CRM and cloud app platform purchases the leading API connector of apps platform. So while it remains to be seen exactly uh, how things will, uh, will integrate and will interact, uh, we believe that this particular acquisition by Salesforce is going to have a significant impact on you as a Salesforce developer and your ability to innovate. Uh, in fact, uh, Mark Benioff said about the acquisition, that together Salesforce and MuleSoft will enable customers to connect 
all of the information throughout their enterprise across all public and private clouds and data sources. Uh, Shri and I, uh, back at the beginning of May, about a month ago, we had the privilege of uh, attending the MuleSoft Connect event in San Jose, California. We had the opportunity to speak to many members of the Salesforce management team who were there, members of the MuleSoft management team, and many uh, developers who were there uh, seeking information on MuleSoft. And one thing is clear, everyone is excited about what this can mean to their, their, their ability to innovate and their ability to increase the speed of, of, of their integrations and, and their deliveries. Um, but MuleSoft, as you'll see, uh, is kind of a, a beast to its own. There's a very vibrant developer community. It's well-established practices and methodologies. And for that reason, I'm gonna now uh, pull up the agenda slide and introduce you to Sri Mandati. Sri, uh, actually we'll pull up a little bit about Sri first. Sri runs the R&D group for AutoRabbit and he leverages his unique experience, 20 years uh, really being in the trenches of the integration industry. He ran, built and ran an integration team for five years and in fact spent two years as an evangelist at MuleSoft. So that unique combination now, uh, is, we're fortunate enough to have him at AutoRabbit where he leads our MuleSoft practice. So Shree, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, and then we'll come back at the end to field some questions. Thank you, Mike. Uh, th um, thank you, Amit, for the intros, for the opportunity for us to uh, present to this group. Um, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that uh, uh, at the end of this call, uh, the whole team, uh, all of the attendees will be as excited as me into this acquisition and then at least learn some things about MuleSoft, uh, get get more inquisitive about why MuleSoft and what it will do for your careers and uh, how can you leverage on that. Now, now let's see, what do we want to see? Uh, the, the technology overlap, uh, Salesforce and MuleSoft are, are two different beasts in, in their own right. Uh, Salesforce is primarily a CRM application. Uh, it hosts data, you manage your contacts, your relationships, uh, your opportunities, uh, all of the different attributes on the Salesforce, along with this force.com platform where you, in, you develop your custom applications, you do a lot more from a data processing side. MuleSoft on the other side is more of a glue um, between the applications. MuleSoft itself doesn't host any data. So it's primarily metadata. And if you, if you want to equate that to probably Apex classes, or it, it does things in the background that you don't see what's happening. <coughs> um, an overview, let's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just touch base in there. It's a run, run agenda perspective. Um, how will it help you as a Salesforce developer? What are the opportunities that you will get? And what did we hear at the Connect? Um, uh, Auto Rabbit, no more. Uh, we, are, we are done with all the introductions there. Uh, just a happy ending there. And then any questions uh, from there? Right. So what is this whole thing about MuleSoft? Uh, in, in, in my words, uh, we want to call it a ground to cloud communication. It's, it's the glue between what you have on-prem, your SAP, your databases, your custom applications, um, uh, and your Salesforce, Workday, mobile applications that are in the cloud. So we, 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 MuleSoft lies in between here, translates or transforms data and provides access to the legacy systems that are on-site. Uh, that have not traditionally had APIs or open access into other systems. MuleSoft specifically is a company with an, and their product is called AnyPoint Platform. AnyPoint is the brand name for everything MuleSoft does in this space. Um, they, they engage uh, uh, in the on-prem instances and also in the cloud instances. They are a cloud-first strategy, uh, but uh, with the roots and with the uh, primary business coming from on-prem integration of the on-prem applications, um, they, have, they have both environments. Uh, you can set up in your private clouds, you could do a hybrid implementation, or you could actually do a hosted by MuleSoft implementations. 
this whole thing, this, uh, uh, these uh, five components primarily consists of MuleSoft, a design studio, a, a very rich UI-based uh, design, uh, every, everything drag and drop. There are uh, extensions that you can do full-fledged programming being a Java developer but the requirement to do so is not as high. Now, uh, let's look at uh, what are the, uh, where would it help from a Salesforce side? Um, in, in the Salesforce world, um, what we want to believe is we host a majority of the sales side of the information. Now, what happens to the marketing side of the information what happens to the HR uh, and the other numerous other applications. It's uh, typical for most companies to host about 300 to 900 applications to run a large business. Now, every application has data that they believe is, is, is in, in their, uh, their strength or uh, their weaknesses in there. We need to, integrate this to gain a much bigger value. So these are the five different common patterns that um, Salesforce developers need to understand. We migrate data from one system to other system. We broadcast data, that means anytime there's a change in an opportunity in an account on a contact in Salesforce, we can broadcast that information for other systems to consume. We aggregate the data from Salesforce and other systems to present, present as one unique view. Uh, there's bidirectional sync and there's correlation in there. So my, my slides are going to be very basic in there. It's primarily uh, talking points uh, much more. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're all waiting for to see what the mules of UI looks like and what it will do for us. So migration, it's a, it's a one way, whether coming into Salesforce or going out of Salesforce. Your broadcast pattern, the same thing. Either Salesforce sends out data that other systems consume, or there are a lot of instances where other systems send out data. Let's say there's a HR record, a new employee has joined a company. Now a workday system or any other HR system would uh, uh, broadcast that data, and then all of the receiving systems like Salesforce, we need to create a new record if this is a sales guy. So all of that automation could be done from here. There's an aggregation pattern where no system is complete in itself. You need to mix and match data from multiple systems to form one viewpoint. This, is, this actually has been the most popular use case from a MuleSoft uh, scenario, or MuleSoft Salesforce scenario. You can think of as a customer 360. You have customer information in Salesforce, uh, in HubSpot, in SAP for your deliveries, in your uh, QuickBooks for your account management. All of this information together, we'll view it as one system. Bidirectional sync, same way, I send it to you, you send it to me. Uh, so uh, we can, uh, we, uh, there are data elements within the account, some elements, other systems might be holding a key and, and we could sync data between them. Correlation, uh, th th this is the MDM type of scenario, master data management, where you have within the Salesforce, you have two orgs or multiple orgs in there, and you need to uh, keep the two records in sync all the time, uh, and then uh, and then uh, and then keep the data uh, flowing smoothly within them. Uh, from here, uh, I'd like to just go into what happened at Connect. We have a lot of big names that that came in there. Uh, Greg Short from MuleSoft CEO, Mark Benia from Salesforce CEO, and, and uh, Tim Berners, uh, he is the uh, inventor of the World Wide Web. They were like, uh, every, every one of them, uh, this is the management uh, uh, from MuleSoft and Salesforce together. And as Mike was mentioning earlier, we had a lot of conversations with the developers, architects at all level, and the excitement uh, definitely um, uh, flows through every single person there. Uh, primarily, they, they launched their new uh, release in there. DevOps journeys, uh, uh, every client is coming to a DevOps transformations right now. The application network where 
uh, every, uh, when we are talking about Salesforce, Workday, SAP, the, all of these 500, 600 applications together, imagine a world where each of these is able to talk to the other in a, in a, in a fast and agile manner. That's the end goal of what MuleSoft does to a client. It provides, it creates an application network for them. Um, a, a quick slide, I want to just move over that. Uh, what we do, I think Mike already, already spoke about that. So uh, at this point of time, let me stop here uh, from, from the presentation side, and then let's, uh, uh, let's move to the uh, uh, de demo. Uh, let's see what um, MuleSoft is. Any questions in there, Amit? I think I'll be switching over in the meanwhile. We are good as of now. So I'm waiting like at the end of the session, people will pose the question in the chat window. So and then you can read the question from there and you can answer. So we are good okay. and you can go ahead for the demo. All right, thank you. So MuleSoft, uh, uh, it, it promotes the concept of microservices where, wherein you might have heard the keyword microservices a lot of times from multiple sources in there. Uh, uh, just, a, just a confirmation, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, all right. And just like, uh, if you can just increase the phone a little bit, that will be really great. Okay, uh, there should be a way right here. Something control plus plus or control something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The main screen, uh, the main view is is zoomed out now. Yeah, that is much better now. Much better. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, most of you might be familiar with the concept of microservices. Uh, the MuleSoft is one of the leading vendors out there that promotes this strategy and then lets develop, gives developers the power of uh, how fast they could iterate these, these microservices in there. Uh, a, a microservice, just to give a small definition, is one service which, which can develop, grow, DevOps, destroy uh, the application lifecycle with minimal impact with other teams, other processes that are happening in the system. So, uh, for example, in the in the Salesforce uh, in the Salesforce system, you have got uh, uh, 100, 100 different processes, all of them working in the same Salesforce instance, and uh, each service in there actually happens to be in the back end a microservice that you could update your opportunity screens or APIs, everything in there on a separate lifecycle and doesn't have to depend on everything else in there. So uh, let's see, in, in a MuleSoft space, it's all a drag and drop interface here. There is a provision to get into the Java code if you want to, uh, but uh, in my almost 10 years of association with MuleSoft, I have rarely ever had to get into the Java code. Uh, the, there are about 120 to 150 uh, endpoints that, that we are talking about connectors. And there, there's a vibrant community that's developing more connectors on a daily basis. Uh, uh, every, every major application that we can think of has a built-in connector in here. So uh, what we typically do is uh, every MuleSoft application is divided into flows. A flow is a, a process, a, a module, a function or an Apex class if, we, if you want to equate it to uh, the Salesforce ecosystem. In there, uh, we could run uh, based on triggers like a poll, or we could do based on a HTTP uh, uh, request. Uh, HTTP is probably one of the most popular ones in there. Uh, this, this would be like an extreme simple measure where I take in a HTTP request, I retrieve data from Salesforce using SQL, and then I send the data out back to the user. Uh, now, uh, this is a contacts from Salesforce. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm querying Salesforce every 60 seconds, and then for every record that I get from the Salesforce, uh, this is a, a batch mode. We transform that into the database, check for uh, fields in the database. So all of this, if you see here, there's no code. So query, 
uh, we, we, are, we are writing your SQL, SQL statement in here. There's a query builder that you can do. Uh, you, you can do like a visual builder in here. Check existence in a database. Again, the same thing. We, we are not writing Java code in here. Transform, this is one of, this is a visual transformation where we are translating data from the Salesforce API structure, the Salesforce response structure to the database structure. Uh, this, this is very context aware. So if you, if you drop in the transformer between the update contact and the log, it knows the response structure after this method and then the input structure at this method. <coughs> so uh, this is using the polling method. And then if you, if you look at, uh, it has uh, IMAP uh, to XML. It polls for emails, pulls the attachments in, and then we can, we can send that to, uh, to files. Uh, we can do, Uh, from from Salesforce to from SAP to Salesforce. Now here uh, SAP is the is the data uh, data provider in here, uh, and then uh, and then your Salesforce is your data uh, uh, data receiver. So we first get all of the data from all the accounts from Salesforce. We query from SAP, and then we merge these two data together, and then say. Hey, there's a new record in SAP for us uh, that, that comes here. So everything is drag and drop. Any use case that you are, you are planning on uh, would, would actually follow, uh, follow the same approach. Uh, as if this is the primary use case that most of you would be familiar with or need to. Now, uh, uh, we will want to pick up uh, data from two different systems and then compare how the data, uh, uh, which system has the latest data of, of a particular account, and then we could do translations from there. So uh, uh, query accounts in Salesforce instance B, uh, we, are, we are doing uh, two, two queries here, and then we do a uh, query from Sorry for that. Uh, we, we, we map the data in here and we absorb the data into Salesforce instance B. Now query account by matching, name, matching names in here, update accounts into the database. So all of this in here is if you see just drag and drop for us. Uh, and and within the, from within the uh, 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 MuleSoft, there are a lot of uh, uh, templates provided in the system uh, that will uh, that will ramp up. Let me see. I went to the other screen. Okay, Th these are all the built-in templates that are provided inside from sales for, uh, inside from the MuleSoft, uh, and most applications have uh, have templates in there. A Salesforce or Salesforce Workday SAP and database account. This one is a, a broadcast type, um, broadcast type information. A Salesforce R to R user bidirectional sync. Uh, this one you, you get from uh, one system and the other system. Accounts are flowing between both the systems in here for us. Uh, if if we start off as a as a new application, I just want to show you here. This this is. Everything is a drag and drop. You, you pull in HTTP, you pull in Salesforce, you pull in an SAP connector. So basically all of the connectors are just drag and drop for you here. Once you do that, uh, everything that's stored, what you see here is a visual representation of that. What happens behind the scenes is XML. For the power users, this is where the fast, agile interaction comes into place. Once you build a template of integration, you want to move. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Shil. Can you just a little yeah. bit increase the size of your font? Oh, yes, sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No problem, actually.
Let me just do this. The screen is way too. No, it's only zooming the whole window. Is it is it is it any better now or no, right? No. Uh, wait, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, the screen is not increasing the size for me. Okay, no problem, you can carry on. Okay, so sorry for that. Uh, and we, 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 we should probably should have checked on that earlier. Uh, mainly the visual layout. Uh, visual layout is increasing, but not the text layout here. So uh, it's all an XML XML document for us. Uh, at end of the day, the whole source code for what's happening in here is managed as XML data for us. So uh, what, what, what you can achieve from here is, if you want to retrieve data from an instance that you don't have a, uh, I mean, th there is an API in there that you just need to access from within Salesforce. You could create an API on the MuleSoft to access the data from the other systems, merge the data, uh, and then uh, we could, integrate that into Lightning or into Apex as an external call for you. Uh, and when, when we say microservices, everything that we are doing here, when you want to provision this between multiple applications, sorry, between multiple sales orgs, all of the data that's happening here is externalized into variables. Now, when you're deploying this, you, are, you modify these variables to suit which uh, Salesforce instance that you want to talk to. Okay. So uh, when, when we go into the, into, into the query builder, now you are, you are sorry, uh, this one is not connected to the database. Let me just see. Now we can we can query everything right from right from the UI here. I don't need to know early, uh, earlier on what 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 the uh, S objects are uh, in Salesforce. Everything is retrieved for me, and then I can do a, a, a complete query builder right from here. This is not just for Salesforce. Every application that you are talking to has the same thing. It's called data sense, uh, data sense query language. Um, uh, so you, you, you get the uh, document, built-in documentations for you for the APIs. When, when uh, you're connecting to SAP system, when you're connecting to a workday system, now uh, you get the complete information here. When I'm translating, uh, this is what, when, when, I, when I'm sending a transformation, I have the complete uh, Salesforce. Uh, the, here, if you remember the, in the SQL, I had a get only billing data. Now my transformation is aware of what happened in there. It, it, it's uh, with, with the drag and drop interface, it just becomes uh, clearly uh, just a simple, uh, drag from here, and then you, you 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 have your output response here. You do a drag and drop. And Amit.
mic amit yeah we are able to hear you yeah. you can continue okay sorry uh for a brief period i went on muting here uh so when when you, when you are uh, when you're doing this uh, this one it's a batch mode or a bulk mode in the in the in the batch mode you process record by record that's a default mode from in the in the mulesoft ecosystem uh, there's a bulk mode when you're talking to salesforce we could actually enable bulk integration uh, we could, we could get millions of rows uh, in here not not a, it's all, it's all happens using a streaming methodology so the pace at which the the, the records happen is just dependent on uh, how fast salesforce can spit out data from there uh, it, it's it's known to run at 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 millions of records plus per um, per hour from there uh, once the, once the development is complete here uh, the ui uh, has an integrated unit test unit test scenarios uh, called m unit because this one is a is a proprietary language in here you don't want to get into the details of how the poll is happening in here you want to test uh, on top of this flow so each flow is considered a unique uh, uh, a unique development object and then you you run the application you run the unit unit test cases at this as a black box scenario and if you if you want to there, there are provisions where you could actually get into full fledged java and then it's it's all uh, it's all based on pojo the, the, the uh, plain old java methods or you could you could do any of the jsr compliant languages so basically you can see python javascript uh, all of those scripting languages are enabled uh, we could we could run with uh, multiple of them uh, in, in, in any one application you are not restricted to I want to run only Java or only only Groovy. Every step in this process, you have the ability to use multiple languages uh, as a as a part to enhance what system doesn't provide you by default from one of these drag and drop options. Uh, once once all of this is completed, uh, the AnyPoint platform uh, provides access to deploy this application. As an API onto the Cloud Hub instance, uh, every application here, when we are seeing this here, contacts from Salesforce, importing an email attachment, every one of these here runs as its own service uh, on the on the uh, its own EC2 instance almost. Uh, it it uh, that way you are not you are you have the ability to keep modifying on this app. And not affect the other applications uh, while, while they are processing. When you deploy to the Cloud Hub, you, uh, if you remember, uh, none of these applications have built-in security here. If you see, these are all open applications. So the mules of concept is a developer at the time of developing the API or extraction need to be concerned only with the logic of that work, and then all of the security is handled at the platform level. There are policies that you set at the APIs, wherein when you are monetizing your applications, you could you could give in two or three tiers of access. Uh, let's say a gold tier access uh, uh, access client would get ten uh, requests per second, the versus a platinum level uh, uh, resource would get a, a thousand requests per second. So all of that is manageable at the runtime for you. And nothing needs to be done from as a developer. And also, this application, when you're developing here, we are not saying whether this needs to be hosted in the cloud or whether this can be hosted on prem for the uh, at the client location. Uh, because again, it's the same runtime that, that happens to run in, in both instances. A developer is concerned only with the application logic. How am I going to translate the data between Salesforce and, 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 and another, another database instance? Now the deployment time is when you decide I want to I want to run this on a small server where I don't I don't need a a lot of resources or this is a mission critical application I could run five systems in parallel it's just a point and click uh, uh, five systems in parallel and then run them on the, on the cloud hub on the hosted infrastructure uh, this, that's all a deployment level activity.
Okay, I think that's uh, that's pretty much uh, uh, what I wanted to show from the MuleSoft application standpoint. Uh, I want to I want to take in any any questions in there? Um, she, I can see like couple of questions are posted in the chat window. So if you okay. can open the chat window and read the question and answer them, okay. that will be really great. Let me open that. Very first question from my side, like, uh, do we have any like uh, uh, URL somewhere where we I can go and register myself and do the hands-on on the means of? Yes, uh, something, something like pre limited developer edition, something like that. Uh, yes, uh, let me. Uh, yes, the whole development edition. Uh, what you see on the screen right now, the AnyPoint uh, Studio that we can, are not able to see your screen. I hope. Yeah. Like not so. This studio, this AnyPoint studio, uh, you can't see my screen? No, oh, you sorry. need to share. Sorry. So here, uh, this application that you're seeing in here, all of this visual application, this is for free. So you go to mulesoft.com. I'll, I'll, I'll post the URLs uh, right, right following this call. I'll, I'll send you the URLs. Sure. Uh, so everything that you see in here is free. Uh, you can download this. You can run this on your uh, right from within this uh, IDE. It's a free runtime. If you want to host this uh, this application right now outside of this IDE, that's when we get into the licensing requirements for MuleSoft. MuleSoft is also an open so open source application. If you if you remove some of this SAP, uh, some of these uh, enterprise applications. Most other small applications, you could also run them as a uh, on the um, open source instance. Uh, I will include the uh, URL links as a response. Sure, thank you so much. You can read the other question. There are lots of guys who are asking, so you can read the question. Um, uh, how how do I see this share and uh, just click on the chat and uh, uh, just go to the. Do well, you want me to read? Yeah. Do you, want, uh, okay. do you want me to read off some of the questions to you? I got them. I got them. Sorry. Thank okay. you. Okay. Great. Okay. So uh, there are not not a, few, not a lot of me here, so I can I can go uh, from, from the line by line. Uh, any similarities between MuleSoft and and Microsoft Azure? Uh, there are some similarities. I would say more uh, uh, Microsoft Azure has another server called BizTalk. BizTalk got rolled into Microsoft Azure, uh, uh, some of the properties in there. BizTalk is a direct, direct competitor to MuleSoft. Uh, both of them run very similar approaches. Microsoft Azure on the other side is also equivalent of the Amazon uh, AWS. So they host instances uh, for uh, any other applications. So MuleSoft is specific to integration. Microsoft Azure does other things other than integration. And actually, MuleSoft could be run, uh, not could be. MuleSoft is run on the Microsoft Azure with a lot of clients. Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, every one of them, uh, they are more of a PaaS and, and, and IAS infrastructure services, whereas MuleSoft is one application that runs on top of that. How do we get hands-on? Uh, I'll send the I'll send the I'll send the links uh, uh, right after this call in here. Is there a way to get a trial? Uh, yes, uh, there's no specific developer edition for MuleSoft. Uh, it's a it's a, it's a trial edition. Your IDE that you get downloaded is free forever. So you could you could create your applications. You could run them uh, for testing from within your studio, and that's uh, that's uh, uh, always free. Only when you want to deploy this application and then le uh, make calls from outside of your desktop, uh, that's when you will run into, uh, uh, you, you, you would need a license from MuleSoft. Uh, MuleSoft licenses uh, from, from production and non-production, like uh, two, two, uh, two different licenses in there. Integration is definitely yummy as uh, probably much more than analytics, I would say. Uh, I'm, I might be extremely biased from that perspective. I have been in the integration space for over 20 years, and this is where all the magic happens. You are integrating, you are uh, making the communication easier for the application that wants to do that. This is the 
uh, uh, this is the provisioning tool. This is what uh, Amit, me, and we do here. We bring in all the people in here. We, you all communicate with each other. The more you communicate, the more you grow into your professions, into your careers, uh, uh, the more satisfied we are. That's the platform that we are building in here. That's exactly what MuleSoft does. You have 500 applications. Now we want each application to be able to talk to the other application and grow as an application network. Uh, the MuleSoft, uh, the, the, this, this is a good tutorial in here. Apart from this tutorial, actually, MuleSoft has their very basic developer certification is actually free. Uh, there's a MuleSoft, MuleSoft Developer University. Uh, I'll, I'll follow up with a link uh, right after this uh, uh, near to that. It's, it includes training. It's an eight-week course which follows up with a certification, uh, MuleSoft Developer. Uh, okay, all boxes are almost separated. And now here, uh, when we say the flow to flow is all like an interconnectivity, you, you, do, you don't need to drag and drop. What we call is, uh, it, it, it's more like Apex classes. Each of the flow that we are talking about, each of the flow that we are seeing here is a function, is a, is a procedure, is a, is a module, is, is an Apex class by itself. From within here, we could, actually, we could actually call in and then say, call another flow. Sorry. So from within here, I could actually call other flows from within this application. So that's how we do, we do flows. Uh, a flow is a unit of work that could be tested on its own. That's the primary intent, uh, intent of the mod modularization of the code here. Does MuleSoft store any data, uh, any of the transactions between the systems? MuleSoft itself is an integration only application. It does not store data by, in, by itself. You as a developer could add a database in here, could add logging in here, uh, you could do, uh, it's, it's a platform. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, I mean, for lack of better terms, it's a 4GL or 5GL language for you. It, it, it makes things easier for you by doing drag and drop, but that's all it is. The only data that MuleSoft stores out of this is transaction level. How many times did this Mule flow got executed? How, were there any errors from there? How many times that this process got executed? So analytics on actual uh, application, uh, uh, what, what happens here? That, that's the only thing that MuleSoft stores with, uh, with it. Uh, <coughs> what are the difference between Delboomi and MuleSoft? Delboomi and MuleSoft are direct competitors in the market. The one advantage, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably biased in here, one advantage with MuleSoft is when you write this code in here, a developer does not know whether I'm running this on the cloud or on-prem. Now, that gives a flexibility for the deployment organization or for the infrastructure organization to grow, expand horizontally or vertically. Versus Dell Boomi, the application that you're developing, if you are developing for the cloud, it's different. There's no on-prem instance for, for Dell Boomi. They run their instances just as a proxy calls on, on the end system. SF Integration Cloud. This is a very, very interesting topic from a MuleSoft perspective. I had a lot of talks on this with the Salesforce, uh, uh, Salesforce community when I attended the, uh, uh, the, the uh, trailhead in San Francisco. The Salesforce Integration Cloud is an independent offering from Salesforce which got initiated, the project was in the works much before the MuleSoft acquisition. This was a response to an internal demand that says Salesforce has Salesforce, marketing, marketing cloud, service cloud, sales cloud, multiple clouds in there. Most of the data right now is still siloed out. If you want to access data from the marketing cloud, you need to integrate the data 
or you need to provide an external data access in your sales cloud. Now, all of these systems, you need to integrate them. The response to that was the integration cloud offering from Salesforce. They just released it, or uh, I don't know if it's a, still a general availability release, but it, it was a, uh, it was a, never thought it was a release right at the time of MuleSoft. What I'm hearing is because these two provide very, very similar capabilities into the future, there's a probability that these will be run as a single team. Uh, whether MuleSoft merges into integration cloud or integration cloud merges into MuleSoft, we need to we need to wait and see for that. But uh, there's a pretty high uh, response to me that both of those will be working together into the future. How this code moves to cloud? Now, when we write this Mule application here, it's a bunch of XML files. There are references, there are flows, there are unit tests, all of these, every one of them is an XML file in here. MuleSoft by default provides a Mavenized approach. They include all of the dependencies into the Maven form files. And typically you run a Maven build and you run your M unit or J unit test case scenarios. Once your Maven builds are completed, you infuse your properties that we were, we were talking about here. Every deployment, you, you, you create a set of properties for each deployment. If first you want to test this in a sandbox, I want to use my sandbox instance. Then I, when I'm deploying this to production, you'll change all of these properties. These properties files could be infused at the time of deployment for you. Uh, now, you, you go to any point runtime manager, which is the cloud hosted uh, uh, the, the deployment mechanism for MuleSoft. All of this, uh, the, the jar files the, that are built out of the Maven are the ones that you just drop into that in, into that in there. I, MuleSoft is just like a process API between systems. Very, very, very true, the statement in here. Uh, uh, although I would like to add to that in there, MuleSoft promotes a methodology called three-tier API structure. A process API, a system API, and an experience API. So the, the, the examples that we are talking about here were primarily process APIs. We are, we are moving data from one system to the other system. That's a process. Versus a system API, there, are, there could be legacy systems like databases. Uh, there could be uh, other on-site applications that do not yet have an API, that probably have an RPC calls, that probably have ja that need a Java SDK in order to integrate into those systems. Now, MuleSoft, you create APIs on top of a system that doesn't have one. In large companies, most of the consumable APIs that a company provides for its own customers run on top of MuleSoft. So that would be your system API. And then with the easy transformation ability of MuleSoft, now you are able to reduce or expand some of these API responses. Let's say uh, Salesforce API response for account object. Salesforce gets me back a, uh, 25 fields or let's say 100 fields in there. Now, I don't want to write a query for each of my use cases. So I will create a generic API for to extract data from here. And then if there's a mobile requirement or there's a ETL requirement, those are two different requirements. On top of that, I will reduce the API to only send two fields when if it's a mobile application. That's what we call as an experience API. MuleSoft strongly promotes this three-tier separation of the APIs. Experience, process, and system APIs. Does it have a NetSuite connector? Yes, it has a NetSuite connector. Uh, it, it has connectors to almost all of the uh, major, major CRM systems. Microsoft Dynamics, NetSuite, Salesforce, uh, those are the ones I, I could think of right away. If I create some integrations between some systems when I deploy, where is the authentication details store or do I need to install something on the app side? Authentication uh, is stored in the database that you want to store. Like, the, there are, like in this particular case, we are talking about a Salesforce authentication because this application is logging into Salesforce 
as a system user. When you do integrations, there are two different ways that you do. One is you want to authenticate the actual user that is consuming your API, and you need to, con you need to authenticate using a system API that your application, that this particular application needs access to the entire Salesforce instance. So the system API level information is stored in the properties files, or it's stored as properties, as runtime properties on the system, this application can actually use the runtime properties of the system. So let's say, for example, in this particular case, uh, I'm uh, again sorry, sorry for the zoom, but here I'm, I'm just saying contact token here. When I say contact token, it's taking from the uh, my properties file that are associated. I could also say environment token here, and then infuse this variable as an environment variable into the system that uh, we are hosting this application on. How is it different from SSIS? SSIS is primarily a Microsoft only solution. Uh, one of the systems, you, 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 if you want to do ETL type of activities, if you want to do mass transformations within a SQL server, typically your SSIS is used. Now MuleSoft is a generic solution for you to integrate with SSIS, to integrate with the MS SQL database, Oracle database, and Salesforce instance, SAP instance, so all of the cloud applications, all of the on-prem mega applications, and independent databases. Each of those, uh, you, could, you could connect, uh, you could interconnect, and then aggregate the data uh, between all of this. Salesforce in the backend uses cloud provider, Google Cloud or, or AWS. Natively, MuleSoft runs on Amazon Cloud Server. When I say natively, it's just the uh, application uh, that the Cloud Hub provides. They are expanding. Recently, they opened up the Microsoft Azure as a, as a default in, in integration in there. A client, a customer, is free to choose to run on any of the cloud providers. If it's an infrastructure provider, you could run on Google Cloud, you could run on Amazon Cloud, you could run on the uh, or, or your local private clouds, any, anywhere in there. Mules of the cloud are on-prem. The default or the first application, or the, sorry, the first location that a MuleSoft sales guy would promote is cloud. It's a cloud-first strategy. A, your hardware comes for free when you're running on the cloud. On the on-prem, you install your hardware in there. From a licensing strategy, it's the same license. You buy a license by vCore. A core that you run on the cloud or on your on-prem costs the same thing. What are the advantages using MuleSoft comparing with Informatica and SAP PI? I personally have not much information from the Informatica side, but I came from an SAP PI background. I was a PI developer for four or five years before migrating to MuleSoft. The, my first integration with SAP PI, doing it, talking to Salesforce, was a nightmare for me. It took me almost uh, three to four months to do my first integration in there. Versus I came to the MuleSoft ecosystem uh, without actual uh, proper training. I just downloaded the Mule application. Day two, I had my first integration of Salesforce going on. That's how easy MuleSoft is in there. And then SAP PI is one central mega instance you code your application, you develop your application inside of the SAP PI, and then you cannot pick and choose each of the application and then run anywhere else. So from a microservice strategy standpoint, you want to have a bigger, a much uh, heavier separation between your code development environment and the hosting environment, because you do not want to be involved into, uh, into the scalability scenarios that you need to scale the whole system in order to do that versus if I, if I just say I have this one use case, contact from Salesforce is getting a lot of hits. I could horizontally expand just this one API uh, for whatever uh, uh, temporary uh, seasonal requirements. Does MuleSoft provides containerization? Yes, very much. Uh, uh, sorry, MuleSoft does not, as a company, provide the, provide the containerization. 
but a lot of clients have created Docker containers and uh, it's, it's, it's very simple Docker container. There are, uh, if, you, if you go onto Docker Hub, there are at least five or six major um, vendors or uh, architects that are maintaining their own Docker repositories for the MuleSoft, uh, uh, MuleSoft runtimes. Uh, again, there's a MuleSoft uh, open source and MuleSoft uh, enterprise. MuleSoft open source, there are a lot of, uh, lot of containers already built in there. MuleSoft Enterprise, you still need to need a license to apply on top of the Docker. So you have your bare bones one in there and you need to apply your license. Can I sync metadata between two systems with MuleSoft? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about metadata of the Salesforce. Uh, if, if, if that's the case, yes, uh, you, can, you can migrate, you can sync metadata between the objects. It's, it's very much same as the uh, the bi-directional sync I was, I was mentioning here, the, a, within the Salesforce ecosystem, I can call the metadata API or I can call the data API. That shouldn't be, that shouldn't be a big, big change from a development perspective. All right, I, th I think I, uh, I ran through the bottom of, of all the questions. And uh, also, Amit, uh, can you do a, like, like a time check? Yeah, thank you so much, Sri. Like, uh, I, I can also see, like, we already cover all the questions. So, guy, if you have any question, like, we, I will try to post all the, like, all uh, this recording as well as, like, PPT on uh, somewhere in my blog and YouTube. And we'll share the link with you guys. And I will request that uh, if you have, still you have some question, go go ahead and pose the <coughs> answer uh, question there. And I will request the Sri uh, to uh, post your answer there. That sound good, Shri? That sounds good to me, Amit. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Shri. And thank you, Mike, for uh, this great knowledge. And thank you, everyone, for the joining us. And uh, next week, we will see with the new topic. Thank you, everyone, for the joining. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And thank you, like Jennifer and Jitendra uh, oh. for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.